today we're going to talk about the pause. So um, I think a lot of speakers are really scared about how to pause, when to pause. Oh, I'm pausing too long. This pause is boring. I don't want to make my audience wait. <clears throat> There's a lot of complicated emotions around this idea of when and how to pause. And a pause can be so powerful. And yes, there are definitely pitfalls when it comes to pausing. So I do want to talk about that too. But the most important thing that I want to get across in this video today is that a pause can be a gift, a gift to you and a gift to your audience. So that is what we're going to talk about today and also how to do it because I think a lot of people really struggle with that. And then especially when you're, if you choreograph a pause, you're like, oh, I'm going to pause here. Ugh, that often doesn't work. <laughs> but there's a couple of reasons why pauses won't work. So first, let's talk about why we're scared of pausing. Then let's talk about why they wouldn't work. And then let's talk about why they will work if you, what you can do to make them work better. So I think that a big part of why people are scared to pause is because when you are a speaker, there is a certain amount of pressure on you, right? I don't know about you, but I think most of us feel this, I've got to be entertaining. Why am I here? There's a little bit of imposter syndrome sometimes. I gotta just I gotta make sure that I'm I'm delivering the goods all the time. There's a lot of pressure to be consistently giving on stage or on video or on a camera. And that pressure makes us want to just keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And we want to just talk really fast and give everything that we have and then get off stage. Because we're not actually comfortable on stage or in front of the camera. Even like a lot of speakers will think they're comfortable and then they'll uncover the reason why they want to speak quickly and it's because they're not really truly at home on camera or on stage which is which is different from not being scared <laughs> being comfortable and not being scared are not the same thing so the first thing is this this feeling of rushing this rushed feeling this pressure to deliver i've got to be entertaining every single second i've got to be entertaining or i've got to be giving something and if you approach speaking like that, you're not going to want to pause because you want to just download all the information as quickly as possible. But the problem with that is that the audience feels like they're drinking from a fire hose. It's difficult for them to differentiate different ideas from one another. It's difficult for them to keep up with you. It's difficult for them if they have to process what you're saying in any way. Either it's very new information that they have to process, or perhaps you have a slight accent, or there's something else going on. Any extra work that their brain has to do becomes impossible if you don't pause. So keep that in mind as well, is that your your audience's brain has to process information. It's probably something you've heard a million times before because you've rehearsed it, but for them, it's brand new. And so speaking this constant not pausing, speaking as fast as you can and just getting everything out there isn't helping your audience. It's actually making everything a little bit worse for them. Even though you feel like, oh, I've done my job, I've gotten everything out there, I took as little time as possible, I wasted as little of their time as possible, and now I'm done. It's, it's not as good an experience for them. So it's better to take a little bit longer and to waste a little bit more of their time. You're never wasting their time. If they didn't want to be there, they wouldn't be there. Um, but you have to, you have to kind of reframe that and think about, uh, do I feel like I'm wasting their time? Do I feel like I deserve to be here? Like I deserve to be speaking? And if I do, then I need to honor the content. I need to honor this information and give it enough space to breathe, to separate my thoughts in a way that makes sense, to stop after something difficult to absorb or something impactful before I move on so that people have a chance to try it on. They have a chance to catch up. They have a chance to think about it in their own way before I bring in something else. Now, what I'm not saying is I'm not saying that you need to speak at an even measured pace all the time because that is boring and that is something else that people are very scared of. We're sometimes scared that we're going to be too monotone and uh, you know there are those speakers who are slow and their pace is always the same no matter what they're saying and this isn't actually pausing this has very little to do with the pause. This is about the way that they are controlling their speech. 
and a lot of speakers don't like slow speakers because they do feel like their time is being wasted because the speaker is taking so long to say anything. That is not what pausing is. That's not what pausing is. <laughs> it's not about being, you know, unrealistic in our speech. We want to be natural in our speech. We want to be conversational. We want to have a lot of energy in our speech. It's about letting people catch up at the appropriate time. So you're not going to be pausing all the time. You're not going to be pausing every moment. Your real pauses. So I want to differentiate between breathing pauses and real pauses. So real pauses, which is which are pauses for emphasis, pauses for someone to understand something, to let something land before I move forward. Think of these the best way to think of this is like breaks in a, a formatted document. We have the title break, which is a big break underneath, and then we have, you know, paragraph breaks, we have line breaks, we have uh, chapter breaks, which is sometimes half a page. So think of that, you're, you're breaking up your information. And so every sentence will have a little pause, and there will be places for you to breathe as well. We're not really considering those pauses necessarily. We're thinking about the pauses after you introduce a concept or after you've said something really powerful. Those kind of pauses. And you're not going to plan them. They're going to come up organically for you. And you want to lean into those. You want to let yourself enjoy those pauses. It's not about pausing consistently and speaking slowly. That is not, <laughs> that is not what pausing is about. That's pacing. That's something completely different. That is speed of speech. Now we're talking about those those times when you're not speaking. So if I say something really profound and I want my audience to really hear it, I will say something and then I will pause before I move on just to create a little bit of space for them to think about it and then I'll move on. And so that is what that is what a pause is. Now, the only other reason a pause may not work is if it is lifeless. So if we pause and we just kind of pretend time has stopped, <laughs> If a pause isn't so much a space for an idea to breathe or our audience to process or for us to really be in the moment, that's what pausing should be about. But if it's not about that, it's dead air. So if I'm speaking and then I know I should be pausing here, so I will just stop. And then I keep going. That's not a comfortable pause. No one is using that to relax into your content, to, you know, feel their way through what you're speaking about. That is just tension. That is just creating tension. So a dead pause is not a good thing. Now a dead pause is caused by a couple of different things. A lack of presence in the speaker, a lack of connection between the speaker and the audience, and a lack of breath flow. So if you stop your breath, that is going to create a dead pause. You want to be breathing through your pause. So you want to be connected, you want to be present, and you want to be breathing. Wow, these sound like very familiar concepts. <laughs> in pausing as in speaking. You want to be connected, you want to be present, and you want to be breathing as much in pausing and in speaking. And that brings me to the final idea of the pause, which isn't really a pause, but people treat it like it's a pause, so we have to address it. Breathing is not pausing. Breathing is breathing. Breathing is necessary in order to speak. And a lot of people think that they can't stop to breathe. They got to speak so fast and they got to do these tiny top up breaths and they just got to keep going. So what a lot of people will do is they may know that deep breaths are good for your voice. They may start out with a beautiful big breath and they will begin to speak with this beautiful voice, which is at a pretty good pace and a pretty good energy. But when they need to breathe again, they will just take a little top up breath just into the shallow area here because they don't want to waste too much time breathing. And so when they're ready to breathe again, they'll just take a little breath instead of a big breath and then it'll start to make them a little bit tense and they might even speed up a little bit and then they might stop remembering what they wanted to say next and they might feel themselves getting a little bit nervous and they might... <sighs> it brings a lot of tension into the body to do those little top up breaths as opposed to doing a full deep breath. Now, if you are a beginner speaker and you haven't trained your muscles, it may take a little longer for you to do a full deep breath than it would take me, which takes about the same time as a top up breath. So top up breaths have become completely useless in my world. But uh, if it does take you a little bit longer, then at least go as deep as you can. If you don't feel you can always do a full deep breath, 
keep practicing because you will, you can quite easily. It's just that you have to train your muscles to do it. Uh, but also go as deep as you can and take a, really challenge yourself. How much time can I give myself to breathe? Because you're breathing in. This is not a pause. This is a refuel. This is a taking in what I'm going to give out. And so this isn't about letting things land and enjoying the space and letting something breathe or process. This is about taking in what I'm about to give to someone else. And it's important that you take that in fully so that you can deliver it fully. Because if you don't give yourself the time to take a full breath and let yourself fill up with energy and life every time you breathe in, you're going to deliver a substandard product. product. It's going to be less full of life. It's going to be less energized. It's going to be less engaging and less interesting. It might even come across as monotone if you don't let yourself breathe deeply. So I want to really differentiate the difference between a real true pause, which is not a wait, but a rest. You know, like in music, there's a rest when you hear the echoes you know, fill the hall before the next thing starts. We don't want to rush it. We want to savor that moment. That's what a pause is. It's to process. It's to savor. It's to live in the moment. A breath is about bringing in the energy that you're going to give out to someone else. And you need to honor that. Because if you don't let yourself breathe in, you don't have anything to deliver. I hope that that has helped, helped you see how a pause can be a gift for the audience because it allows them to process, it allows them to think about your information in a way that is subjective and unique to them that maybe you didn't think about, about and also a way to just kind of keep up with you because you don't want your audience to be constantly, like, you can keep up with a fast speaker who never talks. But the experience is all about rushing, and you know, it's about it's about keeping up. It's not about enjoying the information and feeling, you know, feeling the information and, and looking at it from a whole, whole bunch of different angles. It's not about that anymore. It's about keeping up. We don't want our audience to be stressed. We want our audience to enjoy listening to us. And so that's the first thing. The pause can be a real gift to your audience. Gives them time to catch up relax into it and get themselves ready for what you're going to say next. And it's a gift to you because it allows you to organize your thoughts. It allows you to become present in your body and it allows you to really think, oh, this is landing. Connect with your audience, check in with them, see if they're processing it before you move on to the next thing. So it gives you time to be present with yourself and be present with what you want to say next. And it gives your audience time to really catch up before we move on. And that is the power and the gift of the pause. I hope that was useful to you and uh, I will see you next week.